was not universal. It would seem that the laws that apply to the uh, to the universe of uh, uh, large objects like ourselves are not the same laws that apply in the subatomic world. So, you know, in that sense, both induction and universalism are, are subject um, to critique. to move on to discuss um, Karl Popper. However, um, I'm reluctant to start. I'd, I'd, no, I'd, yeah, perhaps this is a good time to pause. Let, let's... Um, I'll, I'll put myself in your hands. So, what would, you, would you like me to stop now and we can engage in some discussion, or would you like me to continue for another 15 minutes and then and then stop? Uh, what I can do is give you an introduction to Karl Popper, who, as I said before, was the, the one who gave the positivists the crunch. Any? Nobody has any strong views one way or the other? Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me just continue for a little while then. Karl Popper. So we're at a point here, we're at a point in history where we've seen natural philosophy bifurcate uh, from what is now known as science. Science this new form of thinking called science is marked by induction, empiricism, hypothesis <coughs> testing, and, and so forth. The ones who purify that and bring it to a, a sharp point are the logical positivists. Interestingly, <coughs> the logical positivists, although many of them had a scientific background, were philosophers who regarded themselves more as philosophers than scientists, but still. Um, we then have Karl Popper. Karl Popper, also born in Vienna, where the logical positivists used to hang out. He actually went um, for a period of time and worked in New Zealand, uh, just near uh, just near Australia, uh, and he then left and worked for most of his career at, at the London School of Economics and then at the London University. Um, there is a very interesting, if I can just tell this story uh, as a side story. Uh, Popper was Popper was very influential. Popper was very a very influential. Uh, uh, philosopher of science. Uh, perhaps um, you know, th there are other more influential ones, but he's very much neglected nowadays. Um, we, we have, from time to time, we have surveys of influential philosophers. Wittgenstein is almost always right up there, right up the top of influential philosophers. Karl Popper never is. I feel sorry for poor old Karl Popper um, because of fascinating story called uh, Wittgenstein's Poker. It, it's actually a play. Um, it, it, you might like to hunt it out of the library and have a, have a read. It, it's fascinating. It tells the story of an eight minute discussion held at Trinity College Cambridge in 1946. Karl Popper was invited to come to Trinity College to give a seminar paper to the, um, a, a club called the Moral Sciences Club. Now, isn't this interesting? In the context of the history and philosophy of science, the philosophy of science, this club is called the Moral Sciences Club, not the Moral Philosophers Club. They're trying to bring a scientific method, you see, to morality. 
to all their thinking, including morality. Anyway, Trinity College, they invite the Moral Sciences Club to invite Karl Popper. Wittgenstein is a fellow at Trinity College at the time. And of course, he's there in the room, along with Bertrand Russell, along with a dozen other the foremost philosophers and thinkers um, of, of the time. The question that Popper is asked to address is, is there any such thing as a philosophical problem? Now, that might... And Popper was to argue, yes, there are such things as philosophical problems. That might sound to be a very unremarkable thing to argue, but <coughs> Wittgenstein was adamant that there were no scientific, that there were no philosophical problems. There were only language problems, semantic problems, not philosophical problems. So it was set for, set for a battle. The play is called Wittgenstein's Poker because during the course of Popper's um, reading of his paper or the, the Popper's address Wittgenstein became more and more agitated and took up the poker now perhaps you, you people in Sri Lanka don't have open fires you don't need fires to keep warm a, a poker is a piece of steel about a, a piece of steel about this long and it can very easily be used as a dangerous weapon it's used to, used to poke logs in the fire Wittgenstein picked up the poker According to some people in the room, he was gesturing with the poker. According to other people in the room, he was threatening Popper with the poker. After eight minutes, he stormed out. Popper's 